What's in a seed, you may ask? Well, plenty. Seed is the genesis of life. Seed is currency, used over time to facilitate trade before fiat currency was established. Seed is cultural, especially in the African continent. Seed is spiritual, the link between us and the ancestors. But a law established here in Kenya a decade ago has caught the attention of indigenous seed farmers who are taking on the government over what they call is a punitive law. Join me as we visit different parts of the country and meet up with these farmers to listen to their plight. Our journey first takes us west to Kakamega County, where planting season is almost here. This group of farmers in Ngotse have come together for an exercise that precedes every planting season, seed sharing, an age-old practice believed to be the key to sustaining life in rural communities and the foundation of the informal seed system in Kenya. Here, Different types of seeds coated in ash have been preserved in plastic containers after being dried out in the sun. Every farmer is responsible for ensuring that this seed bank never runs out of seed. But there is a catch. For you to benefit from this communal seed exchange, you must be practicing indigenous and organic farming that does not use chemical fertilizer. <laughs> Kwa vile unalima, ulinja, na watu anaona mapato kwa, kwa shamba. Mutu anakuja kuuliza, unafanyaje, unamufundisha. Aki kuambia anambeku, unamuambia, nikikupa bure, utasoea. Inakupa, utanirutishia. Unamupa kama ni beku ya meto, unamupa kikombe. Unamuambia, utanete vikombe. Sasa anakuwa pisi na hiyo. Sasa unawesa fanya, kitu kama hii. Hmm? Unavuna yote. Eh, unawesa funa ama ukatia, ukikata. Eh, aa. Richard Opete is one of the farmers who have sued the government over the penalties in the Seed and Plant Varieties Act that prohibits the exchange and sale of uncertified seed. Mutu akisikia hii sheria inasema hii mbeku siyo yako hata panda. Anaokopa. Sasa protection imeruti chini. Some of us wamekata. They don't want to. Awataki kupambana na nani na sirika. Kulingana sheria. Lakini nataka yu sheria itolewe. The farmers here tell us that their farming methods are born out of necessity and most times they cannot afford the recommended certified seed that has a restricted shelf life. Una pesa kununua mbegu, una pesa kununua pesticide. Sasa unafanya nini? Unaangalia alternative. Kitu ya kwanza wakikupa mbegu kama 614. You cannot generate on it. Lakini yetu ya kienyeji inaenda. Mimi na pande nilikuwa ya papu. Papu alikufa 1957. Papa kakuja, amekuja, amekufa 208. Mimi sinu napanda. In his lush green garden, Opete boasts of having a variety of traditional vegetables that do well in this region, which receives frequent rainfall, and the convenience of having seed easily available to him ensures his family is well fed, and the surplus has sustained him financially. Kwa vile sometimes mfuwe naesa yanza kunyesha una mbele wale nyuma, lakini uko na mbeko kwa nyuma? kwa nyumba. So utatoka tu na kuanza kupanda. My first upon a Malisa ni daktari wa pili yuko university. Hiyo ni kulingana na hiyo ukulima tu kwanza. Kitu kingine mimi zilinja. Jana maana gani? Utakuwaje na njaa? Uko na kikakula na tena ukikosa sana unakula mbeku. For pete, taking on the government of a 10 year old seed law is a fight to restore dignity to the small scale farmers in Kenya. In her one-acre farm in Koriema Baringo County, Veronica Kiboyo stands out. Baringo is one of the counties listed as being in the alarm phase of the ongoing drought. But on this farm, numerous fruit trees occupy huge sections of the land. The trees provide a refreshing cooling breeze from the sweltering heat, a contrast to the harsh severity of the dry spell on humans and livestock not so far from here. Ukiangalia we are not poor for real we are not poor. Ni ile tu watu tunapuuza extension officers. 
wanafaa kuingia ndani wapime mchanga juu unapata kuna vitu mingi na zamea hii baringo sana Veronica says she grew up on a farm she even studied agriculture after high school and was drawn to indigenous farming after she lost her sister to cancer tungetumia pesa mingi kwenda kununua matunda na ungenunua saa zingine unapata unaweza nunua uh, uh, fruit alafu kule usikie ni kale hiyo makemikali unasikia unaumwa na tumbo badala ya kufurahia ile ile, ile matunda umeenda kununua so mimi nilipenda kupanda zangu na hii imesaidia familia yangu sana imesaidia watoto wangu we really take some good to hospital in her kitchen she still preserves her seeds in the same way her mother does letting the soot from her three stoned stove coat the grains as a preservative for veronica her encounter with the seed and plant varieties act struck closer when a local was charged in court for planting wild grass now known as bavel grass a patented seed by the late jonathan leakey kwa ile hali ya kupunga shamba so hiyo nyazi ilimea na huyu jamaa aka harvest grass na akaenda akaipa 10 sasa hiyo nyazi ni yake watu hawajui locals sasa siku moja mfanyikazi wa huyu jamaa akaenda akapanda hiyo akachukua the same begu na akaenda akapanda kwa shamba yake nini ilifanyika huyu jamaa alikuja akapelekwa kotini kwa kufanya nini kupanda nyazi ile imekuanga tangu enzi ya babu zetu unaona hiyo ni haki Defiantly, she has her own seed bank where she has set out to conserve indigenous crops, trees and fruits that are going extinct here and she is keen on passing on this knowledge to her children for posterity. Ki Africa tuna share mbegu. Hiyo imekuwa. Ki Africa tuma mbegu inatumika hata kwa extinct wakati wa ceremonies. Awaze wala wa zamani wana wakati mvua imekosekana sana wanaenda kuomba Mungu na wanapeleka mbegu kama sadaka Veronica is one of the few residents here in Baringo County who have preserved the traditional ways of seed preservation and in a county that is well known of having thousands of its residents suffering from food insecurity she says if people stuck to her ways then this county can be food secure for generations to come By now, I am beginning to get a sense of what these farmers are up against. They say they were not consulted when Parliament revised the Seed and Plant Varieties Act to prevent them from doing what comes naturally to them. Tukaenda kuandika proposal za competition. Na it was on 2017. Na hiyo siku yenye walikuwa naipeleka ni wakati kulikuwa na nomination za uchaguzi. So nyinyi mko busy hapa kufanya nomination kumbe wanapeleka wanatengeneza sheria zingine huko. Kiptangwanyi is on the highlands of Gilgil sub county in Nakuru. Mobilizing is Francis Ngiri's forte as he seeks to win over some of his neighbors to buy into his seed saving habit. His farm starkly stands out amidst plantations of certified seed. Whenever he has a meeting with local farmers, his seed stock and crops on the farm help him to win them over. If you don't own seed then you don't own farming. Una right. Hii constitution ilikuwa mzuri sana. Walitaka tusaidike tuona wa seeds. Hii imetengenezwa hapana. There must be someone I interpret for us. Atueleze itakuwaje my grandmother ukija kuuzie hii kitu ya ngwashe ati ni criminal sasa. Only the doctors who are supporting us. Kwa sababu ukianza kuumwa na huku unaambua sasa wewe uko na arthritis enda ukakule majani majani hata wakisema we are small percentage doing the wrong thing mkiwa watu wengi si kusema you are doing the right thing kwa hiyo mwishowe nimekwambia kwetu hata tuli embrace hizo fertilizer sana sana saa hizi ya kukui kitu Francis says meeting the requirements of the seed law is unrealistic and economically out of reach for many farmers Whoever certify tulijaribu kuchunguza nikapata one variety hivi si nimeonyesha lot of varieties hapa one is around 200000 As we head east a common thread begins to unravel 
These farmers are not just fighting for their own right to own seed. They are also protecting different indigenous crops. Samuel Wathome has been on both sides of the divide, farming using certified seed and now indigenous seed here in Machakos County for more than three decades, and he shares the cultural significance of seed in the Akamba community. Sana sana kama mbegu za matunda utapata ni waze. Lakini mbegu za chakula kama mahindi, maharagwe, hizo sana sana custodians wa hizo mbegu sana ni kina mama. Wakati mama ama mfichana na olewa katika boma. Na wale wazazi sasa wakwe watampatia shamba mali pa kulima. Mtu wa kwanza kumpatia mbegu watakuwa ni mama mkwe. Watome dismisses claims that indigenous farming is averse to emerging technologies and instead takes a swipe at the county government for forcing the certified seed agenda down the throats of farmers who are barely surviving the neglect from the Ministry of Agriculture. Ule mskuma mbao mekuweko ni kwamba kwanza tumesema wakati tunaskuma kuweza kutumezi mbegu ambazo ni registered ni kwamba uh, itaongezea gharama katika kulima wetu. Kwa mfano umekuwa ukiona county governments zinanunua mbegu kutoka hayo makampuni zinapatia wakulima. Kwa nini unapatia wakulima hizo mbegu? Hilo ni dhihirisho la kwamba wale wakulima hawawezi kufikia bei hizo hizo mbegu. We're in Cheleni in Machakos County inside Mze Samuel Wathome's farm. He's preparing this land for the short winds expected in October, November and December. And he says for three decades he's been practicing farming here. The extension officers have dwindled. In a sense, the nearest station for an extension officer here is 15 kilometers away. And some of the farmers in this location cannot even get that fair to go there for agricultural advice. A few kilometers from Wathome's farm is the National Youth Service Yata Field Station. In the School of Agriculture, recruits are equipped with emerging farming technologies, some of which include helping in commercial seed breeding and multiplication. Here, high-yielding hybrid seeds have been consistent in providing optimum production. I don't recall any day or any time we've always we've been using the indigenous seeds. One of the limitations of the indigenous seed is late maturity. You're looking at the yield and the early maturing varieties. But even here, where conventional agricultural practices are vibrantly flourishing, there has been growing concern over the health implications of the long-term use of inorganic fertilizer, pesticides, and hybrid seeds. And this government institution is exploring organic farming. The emergence of cancer cases in the country, all over the world, partly is attributed to excessive use of chemicals. So this will be a demonstration center for organic farming in this region. Further down in Makweni and Kitui counties, farmers say in the current scheme of things, the Ministry of Agriculture has been dealing them the wrong hand. But this time, they are determined to change all that. Tulpewe bottom up ya mbegu. Na bottom up ya mbegu ni itoke chini kwa mkulima ikienda kwa wakulima. Sio itoke juu kwa multinationals ikuja kwa mku, ikija kwa mkulima. Tuliambia kupatiana mbegu ni, ni mbaya. Na tukaona hii sheria apathali to shout isiwe kwa kama sheria. Kenya has been on a journey to formalize her seed system since the 1970s. There are 26 registered seed companies in the country. 23 of these seed companies are locally owned, with three seed companies being multinationals, namely Monsanto, East Africa Seed Company, and Syngenta. Government-owned Kenya Seed Company is the oldest of the local seed farms. The Seed and Plant Varieties Act of 2012 was another attempt by the government at getting farmers to use clean, 
fast maturing and high yielding seeds. The clause in contention is section 10, subsections 4E and 4F, which say, any person who sells or displays for sale any seed which does not correspond with the description in any certificate required to be produced or displayed under this act offers for sale seed that fails to meet the requisite standards or has been rejected at any seed certification stage shall be guilty of an offense and upon conviction shall be liable to a fine not exceeding one million shillings or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding two years or to both. We've spoken to farmers across different parts of the country and now let's hear what experts have to say about the seed situation in the country. The Seed Traders Association of Kenya is one of the leading certified seed advocates in the country. The organization boasts of more than 50 members who ascribe to the provision of certified seed for high-yielding agriculture. We have not seen a case where a farmer, for example, has been taken to task to explain why they are having their own seed. But our association is telling the farmer, you can choose between this seed and this seed, but finally you'll be able to come back and tell us this seed which is certified is the one which pro pro provides optimal harvest. Stark believes that doing away with value-added tax in agriculture is one way of leveling the playing ground for commercial and indigenous farmers. We, for example, have 16% VAT on vegetable seed, and that is making the vegetable seed in Kenya less attractive. The vegetable seed, in terms of annual turnover, is about 54 billion. It has a potential of employing between 3.5 to 5 million young boys, young women. Stark has been looking at what is called universal sales. Down here, we have seeds that we want to preserve for the future. And the seeds for the last 12 years, Daniel Wanjama, an agricultural economist, has been building a central seed bank for farmers across the country as they try to collect and reintroduce extinct seeds into farms. Our food security policy should focus on diversity. Also, because of all these seed laws, we have seen shortage of seeds, 95% of vegetable seeds being imported, and we have about 70% of our cereal seeds, including maize, being imported. And again, we have seen our diversity shrink. A lot of vegetable seeds, a lot of uh, other crops like sorghum, if you want to buy a certain variety of beans, you will walk around agro shops, you will not find. Wanjama believes that both the formal and informal seed systems can coexist. We need to allow everyone have freedom to exchange, share seeds and even sell. And that does not mean the commercial seed sector stops but we need to embrace both sector. The Seed Savers Network acts as the last resort to salvaging traditional seeds from extinction. Our model that will requires less use of external input in a way or in a great deal helps uh, to mitigate uh, climate change and also reduce uh, carbon emission. I'm inside a local seed bank and just like with finances where you're told to keep some money away for future use, here we have farmers who've brought in variety of seeds and this one is the Black Nightshade, a Managu seed variety that is somewhat extinct right now. I'm being told you can't find this seed locally available anywhere in this country. And for farmers, this is what preserving indigenous seed knowledge looks like. And they hope that this will help us in the future in terms of securing our food security and diversity. There are those who believe that the push to fully formalize seed in the country is a disguise by multinational seed selling companies who seek to colonize Africa's food systems by promoting monoculture. There is a big fight between commercial seeds and indigenous farmer material. When you buy commercial seeds, you don't own them. 
you rent them for that season. So they are saying that next season they expect you to come back and buy from them. Because you rented for last season, if you replant the same seed, it's actually criminal. In African Biodiversity Network, we have got this uh, multiple evidence-based approach, uh, which uh, seeks to achieve, uh, intends to achieve, uh, you know, to bring the two knowledge system together, uh, the science and indigenous knowledge, uh, uh, recognizing one another, experiencing one another, and elders, uh, when it comes to community settings, are the ones who lead the process. Out of this 75 to 80% of the food consumed in Kenya, around 75 to 90% of the seeds used are from the informal seed systems. So if we have such kind of a law that sort of, you know, makes it illegal or punishes farmers for using the indigenous seeds, then we are also limiting the ability to produce food. And the impact that has is that we are either going to see rising cases of, of food insecurity in the country. There is also the feeling that taking the ownership of seed away from the farmer will compromise the unaccounted contribution of indigenous farmers to the country's food security. There are very few conversations around sorghum, very few conversations around millet, um, around cassava, even sweet potatoes because they are a source of um, starch. So it's a matter of moving away from the mainstream and moving away from what we have been told is the staple and, and embracing all these other crops. When you are dealing with economists, agricultural economists or social economists or whoever you're dealing with, they never count into the national basket the material and the seed and the crops that have been grown by the local farmers. The Food and Agriculture Organization reports that the world has lost nearly 75% of crop diversity in the last century. But as the debate on the punitive seed law continues, some lawyers say it is a non-issue because it cannot be implemented anyway. That legislation has not been implemented, is not being implemented, and will not be implemented because in the first instance, government is not interested in agriculture. We used to have a tea act that used to say that you could not uproot your tea uh, plants in your farm without authority from the government. Um, severally, I saw people who uprooted their tea plants, nothing happened to them. I think the folly of having a parliament that does not understand the needs and the wishes of the people, the aspirations and the desires of the people is in such legislation. If someone can argue that so far no farmer has been arrested uh, based on the Seed and Plant Varieties Act, are farmers going to be free to share their seeds in future? We can't sit and say that just because someone has not been arrested now, then we cannot take action on something that is not right. Greenpeace has no interest whatsoever in this case, but we want to see that the farmers' rights are granted to them. There is a problem in this country with the way in which government at the national level and the county government apply uh, the, 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 the Seed and Plant Act for purposes of ensuring that we have a sufficient production, we have certified seeds, and we prevent uh, transmission of diseases and pests among us plants in the country. The other problem that we also have as a country is that we still have a very strong cartel that thrives in ensuring that farmers do not benefit at all from what they plant. Kenya is currently dealing with the aftershocks of a prolonged drought. And even as the seed debate rages on, farmers have to accept that the future of food production lies in seed that can withstand the vagaries of climate change, whether sourced through farmer-managed seed systems or commercially. Bridget's Ghana, NTV.